Okay, mutual inductance and self-inductance. The um, inside of your box of your computer, you will see little coils of wire, little copper-colored wires. Those are inductors. And what we'll talk about here today is the basis for, for these inductors. Three concepts. Mutual inductance. Let's say we have an AC generator that's putting current in a solenoid. We call that the primary coil. When the current is, is in the direction shown by the black arrows, the magnetic field, using the right hand rule, will be to the right like this, as shown in the red arrows. That's the magnetic fields. If you place another coil, called the secondary coil, up next to the primary coil, what happens? Some of those magnetic field lines will pass through the secondary coil and will change the flux through that coil. That changing flux through Faraday's law will generate a current and a voltage in that coil. It's as if you connected a battery up to it. And that gives you this induced EMF in the secondary coil. That's the basic idea behind mutual inductance. And as you'll see, the basic idea behind a transformer. The mutual inductance is defined, so it's going to be an EMF. And the E sub S is EMF induced in the secondary coil. It's defined as a negative sign, which reminds you of Faraday's law. M might remind you of the number of, of turns in the coil in Faraday's law. And this might remind you of the change in flux divided by the change in time of Faraday's law. But it's not quite the same. N is replaced by something called the mutual inductance. It's measured in Henry's. It's a volt second per amp. How do I know that? Because we're talking about a change in current instead of a change in magnetic flux. Well, a current is measured in amps. So this guy is measured in amps. Delta T is still the elapsed time. No problem there. It's measured in seconds. So current measured in amps. Seconds measured in, or time measured in seconds. Um, times M, which is volt seconds per amp, well, the seconds from the delta T cancel the, the seconds here in uh, mutual inductance. And the amps here cancel the amps here. And that gives you uh, a volt voltage at the end of the day. So that's the, the unit of inductance is called the Henry. Made a guy named Henry very famous. So. Um, Mutual inductance minus M delta I by delta T. Now this is this delta I is the change in the current through the primary. So going back to here, what we're interested in is the current in the primary. How much that changes with time will affect the EMF induced in this secondary coil. And M really becomes a constant of proportionality. So it's not, it's not like the N in Faraday's law, but instead it's a, a coefficient of proportionality measured in Henry's. Let's talk about uh, self-inductance. You can also induce an EMF in a coil itself. That's the whole principle behind uh, the back EMF that we talked about for motors. So if you've got um, just a single coil of wire and you're changing the current in that wire, in that coil, so that change in current induces an EMF, a back EMF, in that same coil. That's called self-induction. Bottom line is that 
and doctors don't like change. They're a little bit like my oldest daughter. Anytime we would move a piece of furniture in the house, she would, it would be difficult for her. So they, these guys don't like change, and they're going to oppose any change. And, and that, that is what we're talking about with the self-inductance. Um, the induced EMF in a coil is, there's a minus sign that looks like Faraday's law again. There's a coefficient of proportionality. In this case, it's called L, the self-inductance. Also measured in Henry's, the same as the mutual inductance was, times the change in current through that particular coil. That's an applied change in current. Somebody's changing the current through this coil. And the coil doesn't like it. So it induces a back EMF to oppose that change. Change in current, elapsed time. So, and we'll use that in talking about inductors and circuits. One more concept, uh, the energy stored in an inductor. You might remember the energy stored in a capacitor. There's one half. This is a great review. Remember what the rest is? Capacitance times the voltage across the capacitor squared. Energy st and, and this energy was stored in, in a capacitor. The energy stored in an inductor has a one-half. It has uh, the inductance L instead of the capacitance C. So it looks similar in that way. And instead of a voltage, it has the current through the inductor. So that's the energy stored measured in joules, the usual way. Self-induction, inductance measured in the units of Henry, yes, and then the current through the inductor. And those units, the Henry, if you work out the units, that'll end up giving you an energy in joules. Now, you might remember we talked about the fact that the energy stored in a capacitor is, can be thought of either being stored in the, the charge on the capacitor or in the electric fields between the two capacitor plates. You can think about it being stored either way. Um, with inductors, it's a similar situation. With an inductor, you have a coil of wire, and you've got magnetic fields through that wire. So instead of, for a capacitor, the energy being stored in the electric fields between the two plates. For an inductor, you can think of the energy being stored in the magnetic field that runs through that coil. That's a solenoid. And that leads to the idea that the energy density is related to the square of the magnetic field. 